A boy pursued my girlfriend for seven years, and my girlfriend always knew and utterly despised him, but when the boy was about to be erased by the system for failing his mission, my girlfriend went crazy and rushed to save him, leaving me behind at our engagement party. She said that a boy who had loved her for seven years shouldn't meet such an end. What she didn't know was that the moment she stepped out of the engagement party, my mission also failed, and the punishment was to forget her. I stood on the engagement party stage in a neat black suit, my smile frozen, waiting for my fiancé, Kate Lou. The audience was filled with our friends and family, but the joyful chatter had long disappeared, replaced by confusion and whispers. Because Kate hadn't come on stage yet, she was clearly backstage, already in her wedding dress, but she just wouldn't come out. The host had urged her three times, only to be sent back each time. Mr. Lee. Miss Lou has been on a video call with someone, and she looks very upset. I don't dare urge her anymore, the host said with a dry laugh. I clenched and unclenched my jaw, suppressing my brewing anger. Kate was probably on a video call with him. His name was Jerry. Kate and I grew up together, playing and studying side by side, attending the same schools from kindergarten to university. Everyone thought we were destined to be together, and all our friends and family believed we would walk down the aisle. Kate even swore she would marry no one but me. She was indifferent to all other boys, including her junior, Jerry. Jerry entered our lives seven years ago when Kate and I were sophomores, and he was a freshman. He came from a poor mountain village, tall and thin, dressed plainly but not unsophisticated because his eyes were bright, like stars in the night sky. He used those bright eyes to watch Kate. Ever since she defended him when the supermarket owner suspected him of stealing, the boy fell in love with his heroine. But Kate didn't like him. She didn't like the breakfast he brought her every day the water he handed her after badminton matches, the umbrella he held over her in the rain, or his honest claim that these were just acts of gratitude, and he had no other intentions. He had no other intentions for seven years. Even after graduation, he worked near our company just to see Kate every day. What a persistent person. But Kate was mine. At least until Kate came on stage, she was mine. For the sake of my parents' reputation, I forced myself to suppress my anger and wait for Kate to come on stage. Kate finally came on stage. Her wedding dress was a bit messy, her hair disheveled, her face filled with guilt and conflict, and her lips tightly pressed together. The guests finally breathed a sigh of relief and began to clap and cheer, trying to lighten the mood. The host grabbed the microphone, ready to start, but Kate ignored everything, walked up to me, held my hand, and said hoarsely, Honey, I'm sorry, but I have to leave. Can we postpone the engagement party for a month? Why? I looked at her, wondering if my eyes weren't as bright as Jerry's. Why couldn't I tell if Kate loved me or not? Kate remained silent, her eyes flickering as she muttered, The date isn't good. Let's pick another date next month. Did something happen to Jerry? I directly hit Kate's heart. Kate stiffened, her face changing as she forced a very strained smile. Jerry is in the hospital. Late stage cancer. The doctor said he probably only has a month to live. I've already had someone verify it. It's true. No wonder she hesitated so long. She had someone go to the hospital to check. Seems like what he said before was true, he's bound to the system, if he can't win you over, he'll be punished, I nodded calmly, this wasn't a secret, Jerry had told Kate long ago that he had to win her over, or he would die, in this lifetime, he loved no one but Kate, yes, he's facing severe punishment, dying in the agony of cancer, Kate sighed, pressing her lips together again, she always despised Jerry, after all, being pestered for seven years had exhausted her patience. She even lost her temper once and accidentally hit Jerry. Jerry curled up on the ground, crying and apologizing, but he said he just loved Kate and couldn't control himself. Psycho. This was Kate's usual view of Jerry. Now, it seemed her view had changed. The engagement won't take long. For the sake of both families, let's complete the ceremony first and discuss everything else later. I suggested coldly. It was a reasonable suggestion. Out of a man's dignity, I didn't want to completely lose face at this highly anticipated wedding so I didn't lose my composure. I maintained my last shred of dignity. Kate's expression changed again. She lowered her eyes to look at her watch, and anxiously said, I should go check on him first. I'll go alone. Honey, you stay here. She turned to leave. I felt the anger that had been brewing in my chest about to explode. My fists clenched tightly, my gaze fixed on Kate. Were all the years of our relationship and the expectations of our families going to be ruined today? What a laughing stock my family and I would become. Let's complete the engagement first. It won't take long. I spoke again, hoarse and suppressed. Kate turned around, took a deep breath. Honey, I don't want to lie to you. Jerry said that if I marry you, his mission will completely fail, and he will die immediately. So, can we wait a little longer? Kate spoke softly, no matter how annoying he is. He has loved me for seven years. He shouldn't meet such an end. I laughed in anger. It seemed Jerry's mission hadn't failed yet. He was still trying to salvage it. And Kate, 
Anxious and restless, her heart was no longer with me. She really wanted to fly to Jerry's side immediately, not willing to stay a second longer. Even for our engagement party, even for the sake of both our family's dignity, I shook my head in self-mockery. Unexpectedly, I was the one who ultimately failed the mission. Jerry had his system, and didn't I? Elias, have one too. Seeing that I was silent, Kate kissed me apologetically. Honey, I love you, but Jerry has suffered so much I can't bear to see him die. Forgive me, I'll be back. She turned and left. Everyone was stunned. Relatives in the audience called out to Kate, but she ignored them. Heading straight for the door, I lifted my head, watching Kate's figure move further and further away. The moment she stepped out the door, I felt the world spin, a sharp pain in my head, and I collapsed to the ground. Host's mission failed. All memories of Kate will be erased. I woke up in the hospital, met by the concerned eyes of my parents. There were also some relatives and our kind neighbors, Uncle Lu and Aunt Wong, in the room, seeing me awake. My parents cried with joy, finally relieved. Uncle Lu said apologetically, Elias, you finally woke up. My daughter went crazy. She made me so angry. I swear I'll break her legs. Yes, Elias, don't take it to heart. We'll make sure to discipline Kate properly. She's really out of line. Aunt Wong's eyes were red as she repeatedly assured me they would educate Kate well. I was a bit dazed. My mind blank. Kate, who is she? Isn't Uncle Lu and Aunt Wong's daughter named Judy? How could there be in Kate? Seeing me in a daze. My parents got nervous again, touching my forehead and my hand. My mother cried, aggrieved and angry. Look at what Kate has done to my son. They've been in love for so many years, and she ran away at the engagement party. How can my son face the world? Ah, don't blame us. In-laws, I've already sent Judy to find her. We'll get to the bottom of this and give you an explanation. Uncle Lou apologized deeply. I frowned, hesitating. Wait, who is Kate? Ah, the relatives in the room were all dumbfounded. My mother was shocked touching my head again, calling for the doctor. The doctor came, and I was given another thorough examination, with no abnormalities found. Physically, I was very healthy and could be discharged at any time. I just didn't remember how I ended up in the hospital, and it seemed I had forgotten quite a bit. Finally, the doctor suggested that I stay for observation for three more days and be discharged if there were no further issues. I stayed in the hospital for three days, and my parents, along with Uncle Lu and Aunt Wong, refused to leave. They ate and slept at the hospital, taking turns to look after me. I felt embarrassed. It was fine with my parents, but Uncle Lu and Aunt Wong were too good to me, and I wasn't used to it. I told them to go home, that I was fine. Uncle Lu and Aunt Wong exchanged glances, their expressions a bit strange. Elias, have you really forgotten Ollie? You're our son-in-law, so it's only right we take care of you. Aunt Wong didn't like my detachment. I laughed helplessly. Who exactly is Kate? I can't be her husband. Can I? Yes. You two were about to get engaged, but something went wrong. Uncle Lou took the opportunity to tell me about Kate and me. He finished talking about the engagement party and even mentioned our childhood. How we walked dogs, teased cats, climbed mountains, and trees together. When you were seven, both families went to the beach together, and Ollie was swept away by the sea. Without thinking, you jumped in to save her. If not for the lifeguard, both of you would have. Uncle Lou spoke while observing my face, hoping I would remember. I smiled dryly. I didn't remember any of it. Not a single bit. Uncle Lu got anxious, and Aunt Wong sighed. Maybe he's too angry and temporarily forgot. Elias, take care of yourself and don't be too upset. I'm not upset. I don't even know Kate, so why would I be angry? On the second day in the hospital, it was sunny, and I was in a good mood, scrolling on my phone and eating pastries. Uncle Lu was outside making a phone call, his voice loud. You silly girl, Elias is in the hospital, and you don't come to see him. I'll beat you to death. You can't come. Even if you're dying, you better crawl over here. Hello, hello. Apparently, the other party hung up. Uncle Lou dialed again, but the other party had turned off their phone. Beside my bed, my mom shook her head. Since yesterday, your Uncle Lou and Aunt Wong have made dozens of calls, and Kate only answered one today. My mom was very angry, completely disappointed in Kate. I shrugged indifferently and continued scrolling on my phone and eating pastries. In the afternoon, Judy came. She is Uncle Lou's daughter and my childhood friend. We are very close. As soon as she arrived, she checked on me and relaxed upon seeing my healthy complexion and natural expression. Brother-in-law, don't worry. I've already scolded my sister for you. She's such an idiot. She pissed me off. Judy swore. She was always straightforward, but she wouldn't be so coarse in front of the elders. Clearly, she was very angry. Uncle Lou hurriedly asked what was going on. Judy took a sip of water before speaking. It's Jerry causing trouble again. Jerry has always liked my sister. Right. He once stood outside our house for a whole day and night in the rain without leaving. 
He has cancer now and doesn't have long to live. He wants my sister to accompany him through his last days. And my sister agreed. She's already moved him to the seaside villa to let him face the sea and enjoy the spring flowers every day. Judy got angrier as she spoke and slapped the table. I went to the seaside villa and saw my sister feeding Jerry. Jerry looked so happy. It made me furious. Judy clearly understood everything. She had confronted Kate face to face. My parents were livid. Almost cursing. Uncle Lu and Aunt Wang were also furious. And Aunt Wang almost fainted. Uncle Lu gritted his teeth and said angrily. Kate, you're such a disgrace. After scolding, he quickly apologized to my parents and tried to reassure me. Elias, I'll personally go catch Kate and make her kneel and apologize to you. Aunt Wang agreed. Urging Uncle Lu to go catch her quickly, I blinked, continuing to eat my pastry. Looking bewildered, Judy was a bit confused, and cautiously asked me, Brother-in-law, are you, are you okay? I felt fine. What's wrong with me? Is there something wrong with my phone or the pastries? No, nothing's wrong. Everything's great. It's pretty interesting. Actually, I really found Kate's story quite amusing. A real soap opera. Everyone exchanged glances. My parents were both angry and worried, fearing something was wrong with my brain, and once again asked the hospital to examine me. The results were still normal, but everyone thought I was acting strange. Uncle Lou, without a word, angrily went to fetch Kate. On the third day, he brought her back. My parents, Aunt Wong, and Judy were all present. The moment Kate entered the room, she looked at me with guilt and concern. Honey, are you okay? I actually wanted to see you earlier, but Jerry just got out of the hospital and is in poor condition. I had to settle him first. Kate came over and apologized. I stared at her. Honestly, this woman was really beautiful. About 5 feet 5 inches tall, with a slim and slender figure, high nose bridge, and big eyes. It was hard for her to look ugly. Uncle Lu, Aunt Wong, when did you get another daughter? I have to say, she's pretty. I complimented. Kate froze for a moment, frowning, and reached out to take my hand. Honey, I'm Ollie. We grew up together. Don't say things like that out of anger. Before she could finish, I instinctively pulled my hand back, frowning in displeasure. Who are you? And how can you just touch my hand? I'm a decent person. Kate froze again, then lowered her head with a bitter smile. Dad said you lost your memory. I know you're pretending. You hate me now. I'm sorry. Honey, it's my fault. Please listen to me. She reached for my hand again. I frowned even more, shaking her hand off. What are you doing? Don't touch me. Kate didn't expect my reaction to be so intense. Shaking her hand off, she felt bitter and humiliated, lowering her head and speaking hoarsely. I won't touch you anymore. I know I've deeply hurt you, but Jerry is dying. You know, he's going to die. He's had a hard life, with a tough family and tough living conditions. He's never had a good day. Kate lifted her head. He wasted seven years of his youth on me, and now he's dying. I can't just stand by and watch him suffer. Isn't a person's life more important than our engagement party? Kate questioned me. My parents were about to explode with anger. Uncle Lou slapped Kate on the head. Shut up. Is this about the engagement party? Jerry or no Jerry? Who's more important? Him or Elias? Dad, you can't compare like that. Jerry has cancer. He sacrificed so much for me. Kate retorted. I felt annoyed. I didn't care about the engagement party or who was more important. I just didn't like this stranger touching my hand twice. Stop arguing. I don't want to see you. Please leave. I sighed, asking her to go. My parents also wanted Kate to leave immediately. Kate pursed her lips and slowly stood up. Honey, I still hope you can be reasonable. Jerry has suffered so much. Our happiness is equal to his suffering. Pretend to have amnesia. Hate me if you want. I accept that. But please be generous. Show Jerry some understanding and forgiveness. I felt speechless. What was she talking about? What was she yelling about? Sorry, I really don't know you. As for Jerry, I think he was a junior of mine in college. He's had a tough life. You should take care of him. Love him well. I wish you happiness. I sincerely wish them a long and happy life together. Kate sighed again. I'll come back when you stop being angry. She turned and left, ignoring Judy's scolding and Uncle Lou and Aunt Wong's attempts to stop her. That night, a sudden storm brought heavy rain and thunder. I woke up in the middle of the night, startled. It's embarrassing to admit, but I'm terrified of thunderstorms. When I was seven, I got lost once during a thunderstorm, crying my eyes out. And since then, I've had a psychological shadow. Thunderstorms make me feel like I've stepped on a snake. My parents and Uncle Lu and Aunt Wong weren't around. They were probably resting in the caregiver's room. I didn't wake them up. Instead, I stayed under the covers, scrolling on my phone since the thunder was keeping me awake anyway. But my mom came in, seeing me awake. She teased. With all this thunder, I knew you wouldn't be able to sleep. I smiled. My mom touched my forehead and sighed. I remember when it used to thunder. Kate would come over with an umbrella in the middle of the night to keep you company because she knew you couldn't sleep. Really? Yes. 
She was so worried about you. I remember after we found you, there was another thunderstorm, and you were crying again. Kate ran barefoot to our door, calling for you, telling you not to be afraid. She got soaked and had a high fever for days. She grew faster than you then, was taller than you, really like a big sister. Ha ha, really. I didn't feel anything, just smiled and said she was silly for doing that. My mom hesitantly asked, do you really not remember Kate? She suspected I was pretending too, since all my tests came back normal. Mom, I don't know Kate, and I don't like Kate. My first impression of her is terrible. Please don't mention her again, I frowned. My mom thought for a moment and nodded. After being discharged, we took Uncle Lou's car to his villa. The maid had already prepared lunch, and many of the Lou family's relatives were there, celebrating my discharge. Elias, today is your discharge day. We are here to celebrate and apologize. We hope you won't blame us for not teaching our daughter well. Uncle Lou said, full of guilt, I quickly waved my hand. Uncle Lou had been taking care of me in the hospital for days, and he had worked hard. We had a joyous meal, and the Lou family's relatives all said nice things, hoping I would forgive Kate. They were afraid I would call off the engagement, as our family's businesses were closely linked. Our villas were next to each other, and a fallout would be ugly, but I really didn't know any Kate. Uncles and aunties, you and my parents have been friends for years. No matter what happens between Kate and me. It won't affect our relationships. Please rest assured. I gave them some peace of mind. Everyone relaxed a bit. Aunt Wong spoke at the right moment. Elias, when Ali comes back, we'll make sure to give you a grand engagement ceremony. We won't let you suffer any grievance. As soon as she finished speaking, the butler came to report that Miss Lu had returned. Everyone looked towards the door. Uncle Lu looked pleased and got up. I scolded that girl. It seems she's realized her mistake and has come back to apologize. But his expression quickly changed because it wasn't just Kate who had returned, but Jerry too. Jerry, tall and thin, was wearing a white coat and a thick hat, coughing and holding Kate's hand nervously at the door. Everyone was stunned. Uncle Lou angrily shouted, Kate, are you crazy? Have you no shame? Let go of his hand. Jerry was startled, his already weak body shrinking further. Kate explained, Dad, don't scare Jerry. He's become timid after getting cancer. He was frightened by the thunder last night, and the wind and waves at the seaside were too much so I brought him home, you all are usually not at home, so I didn't know you were having a meal here today, shut up, you're completely insane, get out, and take Jerry with you, Uncle Lou was furious, Jerry shrank back further, saying nothing with his head down, I was really curious about what the main character of this dramatic story looked like, I hadn't seen my junior Jerry for many years, so I was genuinely curious, so, I walked over and motioned for Uncle Lou to calm down, Kate met my gaze, slightly avoiding it, looking both embarrassed and guilty, I didn't care about her, I observed Jerry, he gave a dry smile and looked up, revealing a pale face and still bright eyes, his eyes were exceptionally bright, brighter than the stars in the sky, even though his face was bloodless, paired with those peach blossom eyes, he still looked like a delicate handsome guy, when he was in college, he was very simple, his clothes old and shabby, exuding a lack of confidence, now, he was still not confident, just more miserable, considering he had cancer, Jerry, it's been many years, I smiled, Jerry stood dumbfounded, staring at me in confusion. Kate spoke up. Honey, it's all my fault. Don't blame Jerry. I'll take him away immediately. She pulled Jerry, wanting to leave. He's in such a state, a gust of wind could blow him away. Why are you taking him around? Let him stay here. The environment is good. The air is fresh, and we can call a private doctor anytime. It's suitable for recuperation. I offered my opinion. Jerry froze again. Kate didn't freeze but seemed a bit angry. It seemed my excessive magnanimity and lack of jealousy were unacceptable to her. She probably thought I was being sarcastic. Honey, what do you want? I said we could get engaged in a month, and you have to make a fuss. Why are you making fun of Jerry? He doesn't have many days left. Can you let him be a little happy? Kate got angrier as she spoke. I felt baffled. Why are you angry? I'm just concerned about my junior's health. A terminal cancer patient can't handle being moved around. Firstly, I'm not being sarcastic. Secondly, I won't get engaged to you in a month because I don't like you. Finally, I really don't know you, so please watch your tone. I sternly warned Kate. No one behind me spoke. Jerry didn't speak either. Kate, frustrated, pulled Jerry into the villa. Fine. Elias, you're really something. You keep pretending. I'll take your advice. Jerry should stay here to recuperate. This place is perfect for that. She was furious, her personality quite impulsive. Uncle Lou shouted angrily. Kate, stop. Who allowed you to bring an outsider home? Elias did. Kate was very angry, so Jerry moved in. All the relatives were furious, feeling indignant for me. I didn't care. I wanted to go home. Luckily, we lived in the same neighborhood, with my villa right next door, back home. 
My parents cursed Kate and felt sorry for my suffering. A grown man like me, being jilted by my fiancé, who then brought another man home. It was too much, but I didn't feel it was a big deal. Isn't this great? Who was Kate anyway? Why should I feel wronged? At night, it started thundering again. Summer storms come suddenly, and the thunder is especially loud. I couldn't sleep again. I remembered my mom saying that Kate would come over during thunderstorms to keep me company, but now, she wouldn't come, as her darling Jerry was scared of thunderstorms too after getting cancer. While I was thinking this, the doorbell rang, barely audible in the storm, but my phone notified me, someone was visiting in this thunderstorm. My mom went to answer the door and let the person in. I listened and heard Kate's anxious and high-pitched voice. Elias is afraid of thunder. All these years, whenever it thundered, he needed me to sleep. He can't sleep without me. Elias is already asleep. You should go back. My mom responded with deep resentment towards Kate. Auntie, it's all my fault. I lost my temper with Elias during the day, but I really love him. It's just, sigh, can I go up and see him? No, my mom flatly refused. Kate was silent for a moment, then sighed. Then please tell Elias that I know he hasn't forgotten me. I'll wait for him to forgive me, even if it takes a lifetime. Ugh, disgusting. I got goosebumps, not afraid of the thunder anymore. I turned on the light and got up to drink some water. Glancing at the Lou Villa, I could see the third floor room, the light was on, and a tall, thin figure stood by the window, staring silently in my direction. I was startled, realizing it was Jerry. He stood there like a ghost, probably waiting for Kate to return. I quickly drew the curtains, not wanting to have nightmares. After a night of heavy rain, the air was filled with the fresh scent of the earth. Judy came running to find me. I was having breakfast, and she unceremoniously grabbed my milk to drink brother-in-law. I'm so fed up. Now I have to live with Jerry. My parents have gone back to the company, and I feel completely uncomfortable. At her house, it was just her, Kate, and Jerry. My parents are furious and have cut off my sister's card, but my sister has saved a lot of money herself and has a terrible temper. She even said that if we drive Jerry away, she'll kill herself. Judy kept complaining. I found it amusing. Such a devoted fool, brother-in-law. I can't take it anymore. I don't want to stay at home. Let's go out and have some fun. How about we attend our alma mater's anniversary celebration tomorrow? Judy suddenly suggested. I was taken aback. Our alma mater's anniversary celebration. Oh right. My university was about to hold its anniversary celebration. We alumni were invited to go back and celebrate. Judy was actually my junior. A few years younger. Why do you suddenly want to go to the anniversary celebration? I asked Judy. Judy shrugged. This morning, the school called my sister inviting her to the celebration. She even gets to give a speech. No wonder she was one of the Tsinghua twin stars back then. Why didn't they invite me? I'm quite accomplished too, earning 3,000 yuan a month. Judy was indignant. She was actually mocking herself. Her 3,000 yuan salary was just nominal. Her actual allowance was 100,000. I couldn't help but laugh, but my memory was a bit fuzzy. Were there twin stars at Tsinghua back then? Wasn't there just one star? That star seemed to be named Mei. Mei was the brightest star in Tsinghua's history. During my college years, May's miracles were everywhere. For example, she took nine elective courses and ranked first in three of them. She won first prize in the National College Physics Competition. She won the first special prize for Tsinghua in the International College Student Mathematical Modeling Competition. She was incredible, leaving a deep impression on me. Later, I heard she went abroad, recruited by several top universities. She was probably settled abroad by now. Brother-in-law, what are you thinking about? Are we going to the anniversary celebration or not? It would be nice to see old friends. Judy was excited. I wasn't too keen on going, especially since Kate was invited, and I didn't want to see her. But after thinking about it, why should I avoid her? She's not significant to me, just a passerby. Let's go. We went enthusiastically. On the day of the celebration, we had already roamed around the campus, eating and drinking. After we were full, we jogged to the Tsinghua Grand Auditorium. The Grand Auditorium was where the celebration was held, spacious and bright, with seats and a stage. I heard there would be a ball after the speeches, a real party. In front of the auditorium, we saw two posters. One was of Kate, and the other was of May. There wasn't much to say about Kate. She was indeed impressive, with an amazing resume and a strong background, donating to her alma mater every year. It was fitting to invite her to speak. As for May, she was more mysterious, having disappeared for years. From the poster, I learned she was a professor at Stanford University, the youngest female professor in Stanford's history. She's really something. Stanford is a top school. May truly deserves to be one of the twin stars. Since she graduated, no one from our school has achieved such an honor. Judy was in awe, taking pictures with her phone. And she's so beautiful. Look at that dress. And those refined lips. I was a bit disgusted. Judy was fangirling too much. Even over a woman. 
I didn't look too much and pulled her into the auditorium. There were alumni everywhere, including some familiar faces. After a few pleasantries, the celebration began. The principal and leaders gave speeches, followed by Kate. She looked stunning today, like a celestial fairy, causing an uproar as soon as she took the stage, showing her immense popularity. My sister is really amazing. Just a bit confused. Judy clicked her tongue. I didn't respond. After Kate's speech, May took the stage. Her popularity was much lower than Kate's. Not because she was inferior, but because she was always aloof. Solitary in school, though admired. She had no social circle. So, everyone found her unattainable. I studied her. Her beauty was different from Kate's. Kate was like a descending fairy, while May was like a mystical deer hidden in the mist. Seeing a deer in the forest, that was her. After May's speech, the celebration reached its climax. The grand auditorium turned into a party venue, filled with lively or mature alumni chatting and toasting. Judy loved food and ran around, eventually disappearing. I looked for her everywhere but saw Kate walking towards me. She was the center of attention, with eyes following her everywhere she went, as if she had her own aura. I had to admit, she was impressive, but I didn't want to see her because my first impression of her had already made it difficult for me to like her. Elias, you're here too, Kate called out, her expression complex. I ignored her. Kate tried to make conversation. Did you come specifically to see me? It's rare for me to give a speech this year. How did I do? I frowned. How self-absorbed could she be? Kate, I'm just here to have fun, and I really don't know you. Can you watch your words? I harshly reprimanded her. The nearby alumni fell silent. Puzzled. Kate's smile faded. She pursed her lips and suddenly grabbed my arm, pulling me away. What are you doing? I angrily scolded. Elias, is there really no love left between us? I know I've wronged you, but do you have to humiliate me over and over? Kate gritted her teeth, feeling both indignant and sad. Yes, there's no love left because I don't know you. How many times do I have to say it? I really don't know you. I was getting angry. Who did she think she was? Kate's eyes instantly reddened, tears welling up, looking pitiful. Fine. Keep pretending. She forced back her tears, took a deep breath, and turned to a nearby guy, sweetly smiling and inviting him to dance. The guy, delighted, immediately took Kate's hand and started dancing. Kate looked at me intentionally, trying to provoke me. I was speechless. Was she a child? Elias, it's been a long time. Would you like to dance? A gentle voice called out. I turned to see May smiling at me. May's gentle voice didn't quite match her reserved and cool demeanor. It was a striking contrast. I pointed at myself. You mean me? Yes. Elias. May continued to smile. I was a bit skeptical. You know me. I was practically invisible at Tsinghua. Invisible. Not quite. As a top student in the language and literature department, you defeated me in the debate competition. May chuckled. I recalled the event. It did happen. Bored. I had signed up for the debate competition, wanting to learn from the big shots. Surprisingly, I performed exceptionally well and won first place. One of my opponents was May. But I hadn't noticed this great figure at the time. To be precise, I hadn't noticed any girl. I remember the debate topic was whether love or life was more important. We chose love, and your side chose life, May reminisced. We were destined to lose that debate. How could love be more important than life? Indeed, I won by luck, I said modestly. May laughed. You won by skill. Back then, you were unstoppable, full of youthful energy, like a tree on the cliff, brimming with life. What kind of metaphor was that? But it was a compliment and I appreciated it. So, I accepted her invitation to dance. Otherwise, it would be boring. I confidently took May's hand and led her into the dance floor. She surprisingly knew how to dance very well. She didn't seem like a high and cold academic god but rather like a stunning white rose. I teased. Do you dance often? Yes. There are many balls abroad, and you learn as you go. May looked up at me slightly. Her gaze was intense, quite inconsistent with her usual image, but her gaze was not off-putting. It was filled with admiration and praise. I felt a bit embarrassed under her gaze and found a topic to ask about. You seem to have not returned to the country for many years. Why did you come back this time? I'm about to get my green card. This might be my last time coming back, she replied. I nodded, watching her gentle movements. The music in the dance floor was graceful and beautiful, with pairs of alumni laughing and chatting. I enjoyed this moment. It felt like youth, but suddenly, May was bumped into and almost fell. I frowned and saw Kate and her dance partner nearby. Kate's face was livid, and she looked murderous. Clearly, she had bumped into May. May steadied herself and saw Kate. She didn't say anything, just signaled for us to leave. Stop. Kate couldn't help but shout. She ignored her dance partner and came over to grab my other hand. May looked displeased. Kate, what are you trying to do? May, don't you know Elias is my fiancé? What do you mean by this? Kate was even more displeased. People around us turned to look, bewildered. I was frustrated. 
Kate, are you crazy? I shook off Kate's hand, wanting to leave quickly. May didn't want to lose face either and left with me. May, I'm talking to you. Kate got angrier. I don't want to make a scene, but don't be shameless. Kate was clearly losing her composure with her status and upbringing. She usually wouldn't say such things. May stopped, her gaze firm, her gentle voice filled with pressure. Kate, do you want to be thrown out? This was the biggest provocation. Kate instantly flew into a rage and punched May. She had clearly learned boxing, and the punch was accurate. Amidst the crowd's exclamations, May got a nosebleed but wasn't weak either and fought back immediately. She knew Taekwondo, and her moves were precise. I was stunned. What kind of grudge did these beautiful women have? Kate's madness was understandable, but May, with her status, how could she be even angrier than Kate? I quickly pulled them apart. Alumni also came forward to help. Both were bleeding. May's nose was hurt, and Kate had blood on her mouth. Elias, come with me. Kate pushed through the crowd, trying to pull me. May said nothing, just looked at me. I felt she wanted me to go with her. Without hesitation, I supported May and left. Let's go to the hospital. Elias, you. Kate was stunned, incredulous. I looked back at her. Her face was filled with shock and indescribable fear. She seemed finally afraid of losing me. I took May to the school clinic. After a simple treatment for her wound, May was fine. Are you out of your mind? A professor at Stanford University, getting into a fight at a party. Aren't you embarrassed? I still couldn't understand May's thinking. May laughed. A silly laugh. Tell me, debater Elias, do you think life is more important or love? She asked me a question. It felt like many years ago, when she stood on the debate stage, meticulously asking me questions. I froze for a moment, then playfully slapped her on the head. Are you crazy? I think love is more important. Without love, life is just an empty shell, and there's no difference between living and dying, May said earnestly. I was speechless, raising my hands in surrender. All right, all right, love is important. This time you win. She laughed again. She seemed especially happy tonight, her smile particularly radiant, but it was getting late, and I had to find Judy, the foodie. I said my goodbyes, telling her that if we were fated, we would meet again. After all, she was going back abroad and meeting again would really require fate. May hesitated, as if there was something she wanted to say but couldn't. I'm leaving now. I waved. May opened her mouth, and when I reached the door, she finally spoke. Elias, are you still going to marry Kate? I paused, sensing that she knew about me and Kate, even though I had no memory of it. Did you approach me on purpose? Who sent you? I turned to look at her. Jerry told me you and Kate broke up, so I came back. May didn't hide it. I fought Kate to vent for you. Jerry, vent for me. I immediately understood everything. May had been used by Jerry. Jerry was too cunning. He first used his cancer to gain Kate's sympathy, preventing her from getting engaged to me. But Kate still loved me and wouldn't give up on me. So Jerry tricked May into coming back to be the third party. As long as May took me away, Kate would have no choice but to be with Jerry, allowing Jerry's plan to succeed. You've been used. I shook my head. May chuckled. That's not the point. Haven't you noticed I'm confessing to you? I did. It seems that not only did I defeat you in the debate, but I also won your heart. I smiled, a bit of male pride showing. May sat on the hospital bed, looking up at me. You haven't changed. You're still like a tree on a cliff, proudly swaying, growing freely in the sunlight and spring breeze. Thanks for the compliment. So can I be the little grass beside you? May asked. The rock is too hard. The grass doesn't grow easily. Think it over before you say anything. I waved and left first. I caught up with Judy on the campus path. She was looking for me too, quite anxious. Brother-in-law. My sister fought with May. I'm at my wit's end. Isn't this just humiliating? Judy complained helplessly. Let them fight. I said as I led Judy home. By the time we got home, it was already late. And our parents weren't home. Judy decided to stay at my place. She didn't want to go back and live with Jerry. My parents have given the final ultimatum. If my sister doesn't send Jerry away by tomorrow, they'll use force to kick him out. Awesome. Judy followed me into the house. Still chattering. Uncle Lou and Aunt Wong were civilized people but they still gave Kate a final ultimatum. I think your sister is spoiled. Your parents are too indulgent with her. I complained. She is spoiled, but you bear a lot of responsibility too. If you hadn't allowed Jerry to move into my house, my parents wouldn't be in this stalemate. Judy gave me a look. She was right. I had let Jerry stay at Kate's house. So be it. Back home. We cooked some steaks. After dinner, the doorbell rang. Judy ran to answer it and exclaimed, Jerry, what are you doing here? I raised an eyebrow and went to see. Sure enough. It was Jerry. He was wrapped in a white coat, wearing a thick hat, his pale face devoid of any color. I need to talk to Elias. Jerry said. He's not available. Get lost. Judy tried to chase him away. Ollie just called me and told me to get ready. She wants to marry me. 
Jerry continued. Judy was shocked. What? Say that again. Kate wants to marry me. Jerry said calmly. Judy was furious and reached out to hit him. I intervened. Judy. Go upstairs. I need to talk to Jerry. Brother-in-law. This guy isn't a good person. Judy refused to go upstairs. I gave her a stern look. And she reluctantly went upstairs. Now it was just Jerry and me on the first floor. Jerry walked in as if he owned the place. Scanning the living room and eyeing the wine cabinet. The elegant bottles of wine glistened under the light. I'd like a glass. Jerry pointed to the wine rack. I took a bottle of wine and motioned for Jerry to sit down. He sat at the dining table. His bright eyes fixed on me. His eyes had always been this bright. I opened the bottle and poured him a glass. He took it with both hands. Staring at the gently swaying liquid. I poured myself a glass and took a sip. Asking. What do you want? He didn't answer immediately. Taking a gentle sip of the wine and then showing a blissful expression. Sighing softly. It's so good. This is the cheapest one. I said truthfully. He didn't mind. Choosing his words carefully. Elias. Do you know? My dream has always been to drink wine elegantly like you. That's a dream. Of course it is. When I was seven, the village showed a movie. And I sat on a dirty bucket. Watching a city white-collar worker drink wine elegantly on the blurry screen. It was noble and handsome. That image stayed with me for a lifetime. Jerry's face had a faint smile. And his complexion improved a bit. I crossed my legs. And then. Then I worked hard. Studying whenever I wasn't working. I broke pen after pen. Wore down finger after finger. I was the first college student in my village. My parents borrowed money to send me to Beijing for school. Their backs were bent from carrying rice. Their eyes stung from sweat. I finally had money to study. Jerry's eyes reddened. He took another sip of wine. Staring at the liquid as it swirled. I got into Tsinghua University. I was going to make something of myself. I could be a scientist. A businessman. A government official. At the very least. I could be a city white collar worker. I could finally cross my legs and drink wine. Handsome. Elegant. Noble. I wanted my parents to drink wine too. They deserved it. I listened quietly. Jerry faced many of the same struggles as other children from poor villages. Even if they got into college, the difficulties continued. A glass of wine might be a lifelong dream. So, you want to marry Kate, the rich woman, and live a life of luxury, drinking wine every day? No, Elias, you don't understand me. Jerry gave a bitter smile. I had a great future ahead. I had the chance and ability to change my family's generations of poverty. I even saw that glass of wine. I could almost reach out and take it. But then I was bound by the system. I had to win over Kate. It's laughable. I spent seven years of my youth trying to win over a woman. Being her lowly simp. Jerry laughed. Louder and louder. Tears welled up in his eyes. Like a sudden flood in the mountains. Do you know what it feels like? Being forced to exhaust everything to be a woman simp. I couldn't study properly. Couldn't progress couldn't complete my coursework. Everything revolved around one woman. If I resisted, I would die. Jerry slammed the wine glass on the table, spilling wine on his hand. He shook it off and stared straight at me. I couldn't even feed myself, but I had to buy breakfast for Kate. I didn't like badminton, but I had to cheer for her again and again. I was weak and got sick in the rain, but I had to hold an umbrella for her. When I didn't want to, I faced death threats from the system. It felt like a wire around my neck, choking me, not allowing me a moment's breath. Jerry said a lot. Tears streamed down his cheeks, which he quickly wiped away. I stared at him blankly. So, you never liked Kate. A man like me never aspired to love, in my eyes. Only that glass of wine is what I desire. No man would be willing to waste seven years of his youth for a woman. The so-called love isn't even worth seven days of pursuit. Jerry spoke firmly. I was speechless. Jerry sniffled and exhaled a relieved sigh. I tricked May into coming back. I knew she had a crush on you since your debate about whether life or love was more important. I watched the whole thing. And she didn't disappoint me. She infuriated Kate. Kate, out of revenge, decided to marry me to make you regret it. Jerry sneered. I know her intentions. She hopes to provoke you to stop her from marrying me. That's why I'm here to ask for your last favor. Don't stop her. Let me end this game. I understood everything. Kate wanted to provoke me. Her decision to marry Jerry was made in a fit of anger. If I went back to her, she wouldn't marry Jerry. Then Jerry's plan wouldn't succeed. If Kate marries you, will everything end? Will your cancer be cured? I asked. Yes, it will all end. Jerry was extremely tired. It's been seven years. I'm almost 30. I'm so tired. When will I get to drink my glass of wine? After saying this, he took out a bank card from his pocket. I looked at him curiously as he pushed the card toward me, with some reluctance. I've saved 89,000 yuan. I've wasted all my energy on Kate. So this is all I could save. I'm giving it to you as payment. The password is 137654. I didn't want to accept Jerry's payment, but he didn't take it back. He simply finished his glass of wine and, with his sickly body, left. Judy ran downstairs and asked, did that scoundrel leave? What did he say? Nothing important. 
I replied while putting away the card. Judy looked skeptical. Nothing important. Then why did he come? Is my sister really going to marry him? Yes. There was no doubt. Kate had been driven mad by May. She planned to marry Jerry to provoke me. The next day, she gathered our families and friends for a meal at my house. My parents thought Kate had finally come to her senses and was here to apologize. Uncle Lou and Aunt Wong were also happy, drinking tea and smiling. It's best if you two reconcile. As for Jerry, we've been kind enough not to throw him out on the street. Yes, if Ali and Elias get married, we'll pay for Jerry's treatment, said the relatives, all very kind. Kate, however, said nothing. She just stared at me. I ignored her. She snorted and said, Elias, did you have fun dancing with May? The room fell silent, and everyone was stunned. Ali, what are you saying? Uncle Lou raised his voice. What am I saying? Elias is so charming. He has seduced the most outstanding woman at Tsinghua. Kate's words were full of sarcasm. He didn't care about his injured fiancé, but rushed to take a stranger to the hospital. He probably even cried with worry. What are you barking about? I told you I don't know you. I feel nothing for you. Why can't I care about another woman? I retorted. Kate was furious and slammed the table. Her eyes red. You're still pretending to have amnesia. I'm not pretending. I don't know you. Besides, I've always remembered May and admired her. She confessed her love to me, and I accepted. I dropped the bomb. Everyone was shocked. Kate, enraged, laughed sarcastically. Perfect. I was just planning to marry Jerry. Let's go our separate ways. After saying that, she wiped her tears and left without looking back. I watched her leave, knowing she hoped I would call out to her. So I did. Wait. Kate stopped immediately but didn't turn around. What? I'm planning to get engaged to May the day after tomorrow. Make sure to come and bring a gift. I kindly reminded her. She froze, clenched her teeth, her eyes filled with tears, and left. Kate left just like that. The relatives were all bewildered and shocked. Not understanding what had happened, I didn't explain much and went alone to university. On the sports field, I saw May walking aimlessly. She was always like this, enjoying walking around the field during her leisure time, which led many boys to wait for her, hoping for a chance encounter. I walked quickly toward her, and she didn't notice me even when I was right behind her. Just as I was about to tap her on the shoulder, she received a video call. The call connected, and it was evidently her parents. May, when are you coming back to the US? You need to come back to get your green card. Her father sounded anxious. Her mother also urged. Hurry back. I've found a boy for you. A handsome mixed race guy. May smiled. No rush. I'm enjoying my time back at my alma mater. What's no rush? You're not getting any younger. Hurry back to the US so I can introduce you to someone. Her mother continued. Her father then mused. Daughter. You're almost 30. Right. You haven't dated anyone all these years. You wouldn't be. I'm warning you. Even though we're in the abroad. We can't adopt their ways. I almost burst out laughing. So, May was also being pressured about marriage. Mom, Dad, stop overthinking. I'll go back soon, May said helplessly. After the call ended, she continued walking aimlessly. I jumped next to her and shouted, Boo. May was startled but then laughed when she saw me. Elias, who do you think is scarier, a person or a ghost? Stop, stop, no more debates. I was really impressed by her, May nodded with a smile. Without wasting time, I took out my phone to take a selfie. May was a bit surprised and even a bit nervous. Her cheeks tense. Why are you nervous? It's just a selfie, I said, exasperated. I don't know. I never thought you'd want to take a picture with me. May continued to be nervous, but she was beautiful. Even when she was nervous, I took a casual selfie and posted it on my social media. The caption, we are together. May was stunned, looking at my post in disbelief. Elias, are you serious? She stared at me without blinking. I nodded. After all these years, you're the only one who has made me feel something. What about Kate? Who is she? I really didn't know who she was. May stared at me for a while, then eagerly called her parents. Mom, Dad, I don't want the green card anymore. I still prefer living in China. You've always talked about wanting to come back. Once I'm settled, I'll bring you back. Wow, she's really into this romance. Is this really one of the Tsinghua twin stars? The untouchable academic prodigy? Ha ha ha, adorable. I went home satisfied. But I saw Kate standing in front of my house, looking as gloomy as an owl in the night. She was seething with anger, head down, body trembling slightly. I walked over, and she looked up at me, her lips trembling. Are you really with May? Yes, I admitted openly. Elias, do you really not love me anymore? Just because I wanted to save Jerry's life, you hate me this much. Sorry, I don't even know who you are. How could I love you? I made it clear. Kate closed her eyes, her voice squeezing out from her throat. Tears streaming down her face. Fine. Fine. Don't regret this. Don't you dare regret this. She was completely heartbroken and left without looking back. 
Soon after, I heard a fierce argument from her house, with Uncle Lu's yelling and Aunt Wong's crying. Finally, with the roar of a car engine, Kate drove away with Jerry in a sports car. Later, I saw Kate's post on social media. The caption read, Having you in this life is my greatest joy. There were two photos, one of her with Jerry and another of their marriage certificate. Brother-in-law, my sister has gone mad. She's gone mad. Judy rushed over, looking pale. She got married to Jerry. Right, I said calmly. Yes, she had a huge fight with us, grabbed the household registration book, and ran off to get married to Jerry. It's all over. Judy was on the verge of tears. I wouldn't be her brother-in-law anymore. I also foresaw a lot of trouble ahead, as the relatives from both families would surely explode. I would have a massive headache dealing with it. Judy, I'm going on a trip. Tell everyone not to look for me. I'm fine, and I have May. I decided to leave early, or I'd be overwhelmed. That day, before the relatives could come looking for me, I packed a few things and hit the road. On the way, I informed May and asked her to join me on the trip. As night fell, we sat on the high-speed train, exchanging smiles. Elias, where are we going on this trip? To fun places. We'll travel for a month and then see. A month should be enough to avoid the chaos. Right. May agreed to everything, and we traveled wherever we wanted. Eating, drinking, and sleeping as we pleased. Of course, we also took care of our needs. For example, if her feet were cold, I'd warm them up in my arms. As they warmed up, so did we. What could we do? Those who understand, understand. After the trip, we returned to Beijing. May's parents were eager to come back to the country, and she excitedly went to welcome them. She also arranged for us to have dinner together so she could formally introduce me to her parents. I was naturally happy to oblige. Then I called Judy to ask what had happened in the past month. Brother-in-law, you're finally back. Sigh. My sister is a mess. She's been drinking and gambling every day. Judy sighed heavily. That can't be true, can it? It's only been a month, and she's like this. Jerry divorced her. They got the certificate one day and divorced the next. It was all just for show. And everyone was shocked. Judy herself was stunned. We all thought he was after money, marrying my sister to live off her. But he divorced her the next day, without asking for any compensation. My sister's heart was still set on you. She regretted getting married right away and agreed to the divorce immediately. After the divorce, Jerry told her something, and she became completely lost and broken. Judy was exasperated. There was a commotion on her end. And then the phone was taken away. I heard Kate's sobbing voice. Elias, is that you? I know I was wrong. Please come back. How could you forget me? Are you trying to win me back? Because I abandoned you. You forgot me. I didn't understand. What was she talking about? Jerry told me. He figured it out. You failed to win me over. So you lost your memory. I deserve to die. Please come back. Please? Kate was crying her heart out. But I remained indifferent. Because, honestly, I didn't know her. I've already married May. Goodbye. I turned off my phone. Never to see her again. I was in a good mood and didn't feel like going home. So I decided to take a walk around the city. Passing by Wanda Plaza. I saw a familiar figure. He was dressed plainly. Tall and thin. Enthusiastically handing out flyers. I stood there watching him, looking at his smiling face, his thin body under the sunlight, and his clothes fluttering in the wind. I walked over. He saw me and froze, then invited me. Want to have a drink? There's a cafe over there, and I have a bottle of wine in my bag. Where did you get the wine? From Kate's house. I couldn't let those seven years of being a simp go to waste, so I took the most expensive bottle of wine from her house. Good move. Let's go have a drink. Half a year later, I married May, and my family had long since moved out of that neighborhood. Kate had completely fallen apart in these six months, drinking heavily, gambling, and neglecting her health. A once beautiful woman had turned into an addict. Her parents were so angry that they fell ill. In the end, they decided to give up on her, letting her hit rock bottom. I saw Kate again on Christmas Eve on the street. She revved her sports car loudly, with a pretentious male model in the passenger seat screaming. I watched from a distance as Kate, yawning, got out of the car with the male model and took a drag on her cigarette. She had lost all the pride and elegance of the Tsinghua twin star. Now, she was just a mess. Damn it. So many people. Where's the bar we went to last time? Kate cursed as she looked around for the bar. The male model giggled. I forgot too. Where was it? We drank so much we forgot. Kate suddenly stopped, turned to the male model, and yelled. Forget your ass. You're not allowed to forget. Not allowed. The male model was terrified, apologizing repeatedly. Remember. Remember it now. Kate slapped the male model. He quickly pointed in a direction. I remember. It's over there. Satisfied, Kate walked towards the bar, smoking her cigarette. But after a few steps, she suddenly broke down in tears, collapsing to the ground and crying loudly. The male model remembered, but the person she loved couldn't remember her. A long time later, I met Jerry again, 
He wasn't handing out flyers anymore. He had passed the civil service exam in his hometown. After all, he was from key school. After seven years of hard times, handing out flyers was just a temporary way to make money. With his abilities, he was bound to succeed eventually. After passing the civil service exam, he was preparing to leave Beijing. Before leaving, he came to see me, holding a bottle of wine. I smiled. Want a drink? Mr. Elias, let me buy you a drink. No need to be polite. It's not our first time drinking together. We drank happily, of course, mostly with Jerry talking and me listening. He worked hard, desperately passing the civil service exam in his hometown. He could finally sit back and drink wine with his legs crossed. This was a wine that had been delayed for seven years. Let's raise our glasses and toast.